Hello First Tech Challenge, and welcome to the center stage season presented by RTX. The First Tech Challenge tech team has been hard at work improving the software and electronics for this season's game. Let's take a look at some of the changes and what they mean for you. One of the bigger changes this season comes to the types of Android smartphones that are allowed for use as part of your robot controller or driver station, specifically the Motorola G2 and G3 phones, as well as any Motorola G4 Play phones that have not been updated to Android version 7 are no longer legal for use. And that upgrade to Android version 7 is the real goal of this change. By removing support for Android version 6, the tech team will enable a lot of future improvements to the First Tech Challenge SDK. While we're on the topic of phones, it's important for you to know that next year, starting in September 2024, teams will no longer be allowed to use Android smartphones as their robot controller device. The reason for this is when you use a smartphone as the robot controller, it communicates with the driver station using a protocol called Wi-Fi Direct. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi Direct is relatively unmaintained and it has some reliability issues. So by taking it out of the equation, we can again enable some future improvements. This also means that we can continue to use smartphone devices as the driver station for the foreseeable future. Now let's move on to some other notable rule changes from Game Manual Part 1, which was released back in July. The first one is rule RE01, which relates to power switches. There's a new model of switch that's available for use, and it looks a bit different from other switches we've used in the past. And starting next season, the Matrix power switch will no longer be legal for use. This shouldn't affect too many teams because the Matrix power switches are starting to get hard to come by. This rule also provides an important clarification on secondary power switches. This is something that can be useful if you want to, for example, be able to turn off LEDs on your robot independently from the main robot power. These are allowed, but you should be careful when using them, especially when it comes to labeling the switches. It's all a matter of safety. If a member of the field personnel needs to reach down and turn off your robot in an emergency situation, it should be very obvious which switch they should reach for. While we're talking about power, remember that your main robot battery must have a 20 amp fuse installed in line. This is not a new restriction, but it is an important safety reminder. Next is rule RE12, which is all about sources of light on your robot. This rule got a bit of a rewrite this year, and one of the more important changes is related to lasers. Specifically, lasers are allowed as long as they are part of an allowed sensor. As long as they are rated as class 1 lasers, and as long as they use the non-visible spectrum of light. This provides important safety guidelines while potentially opening the field to additional sensors in the future. And while we're on the topic of lights, some teams have started to use lighted team numbers on their robot. Rule RG03 clarifies that these team numbers must still be visible even when those lights are turned off. Rule RE13 changes restrictions on vision cameras and vision sensors. And the differentiation between these things is important. Vision cameras plug in via USB and generally allow you to stream images, whereas vision sensors act like sensors and they adhere to all of the sensor rules. Crucially, this change allows for the Husky lens. This is a vision sensor that was introduced via the Team Q&A last year and has now been codified in Game Manual Part 1. You can expect some additional support for the Husky lens to be added to the First Tech Challenge SDK soon. Something that's already in the SDK is support for detecting April tags via a new feature called the Vision Portal. If you want to learn more, I encourage you to check out the First Tech Challenge documentation site, where there is an introduction to April tags and some tag samples that you can download. While you're there, keep an eye out throughout the season for additional documentation on dead wheel odometry. This is a new class of commercial off-the-shelf component that is legal this season. Finally, there is a new gamepad approved for use as part of your driver station. It is available in a few different colors, and aesthetic modifications are allowed with some important restrictions. As always, it's important to read Game Manual Part 1, including the revisions that will take place after kickoff. And keep an eye out for updates to the First Tech Challenge SDK and documentation site. It's going to be a great season, and I can't wait to see you center stage.